Good morning and greetings from South Georgia, USA. We are here in the 25th of September, 2024, on a beautiful morning here in South Georgia, feeding the deer, the goats, the emu, the donkey, and the miniature mule. Have a beautiful, partly cloudy sky. Temperature is very agreeable. <laughs> the stag is making himself dominant out there, chasing off the other any other male deer that happened to come up. I guess everybody in South Georgia and Florida and all has heard about the the hurricane that is barreling down on us. I hope it's not as bad as they are saying. It usually isn't. They usually play these things up. But sometimes it's worse than they say. But they have played this one up to be a gigantic storm. And it looks like it's coming right through this area. I noticed the last few days that it's maybe bearing a little bit more to the west of here and that's good to me but then again i realize that i'm hoping that somebody else gets the brunt of it which doesn't sound very christian like does it so i guess i better just be satisfied with what god gives me because all things work together for good for those that love god and are called according to his purposes So we need to learn to be patient with God and take what we get, what He gives us, because I do love God and I do believe that I am called according to His purposes to declare the name of Jesus Christ before men and to feed His sheep and to communicate and congregate with other believers around the world the congregation of believers. Some of them are members of churches around the world. Some of them are not members of churches at all. It is my belief that being a member of a corporate entity like a church is not certainly not required and probably, um, I'll just say not, not required. Can you hear the fawn calling over there? Now he's standing out there in the, uh, in the field by himself. I'll tell you a little bit about deer behavior. There he is right there. He's looking back into the woods and he's calling his mother. That one right there. She, he's looking back to the, his left, back behind him. And his mother's back there. Now what happens this, here he goes. This time of year, the, the does or the hinds, they, they quit nursing their offspring. They kick them out. They wean them. And, and the reason is because they are coming into the mating season. And it's time for them to be on their own. And so there's a period of confusion at this time when the fawns are being left by their mothers and the mothers are getting ready for the breeding season and for the next uh, fawning season. So that is the the way it works. And there's this one over here. And he's by himself, you see. He's, now he's eating on his own. Now he's, he's able to take care of himself now. And his mother's back over there to the left. And uh, she's part of the herd or the harem of this 
male right here. So that's a little bit about deer behavior. Same thing with white-tailed deer. Now he just, this one here just ran another male deer off. Don't come around here and some of the fawn, some of the hinds are right there. Here he is. Okay, now what I want to, I said already that I declare the name of Jesus before men. That is my job that I accepted upon invitation by Jesus. Jesus said, if you declare my name before men, I will declare your name in heaven. That sounds pretty good to me. That sounds like a good deal to me. And Jesus also said that if you asked for the Holy Spirit, that he would give it to you. Now, people that don't believe in Jesus and don't believe in God, they're not going to ask for the Holy Spirit. So you don't have to worry that the whole world is going to ask for it. You know, at one time, they're not going to do it. Some will and some won't. All right, I'm going to start on Luke 13. Now, let me tell you this, and I thought about it yesterday. I did a, uh, a video yesterday, and I was attacked by the devil telling me, hey, you don't have any right to be telling people what to do. You aren't good yourself. How dare you preach to people? And I was feeling that way, you know. He, he put that in my ear. And then I got to think, well, you know, I, I don't have any right to, do, to tell people, you know, what's right and wrong and what they should do. But then the Holy Spirit came to me and said, wait a minute now. You're not telling people what to do. Number one, Jesus is the one that said these things. Jesus is the one that said these things. And you have been given a job by Jesus to do, which is to tell people what he said. So that straightened me out. I didn't tell, I'm not give, telling you what I thought. I didn't make any of this stuff up. This stuff was written thousands of years before I was ever even thought of, or thought of by my parents anyway. And secondly, I do have a right to tell these things because it was given me, Jesus himself said, declare my name before men. So I to people out there that are thinking about this and letting the devil attack you and saying, don't... Well, he went way out there to run that one off. Now, while he's way out there, I'd say that's 200 yards out there, 150 yards. There's another one over here back in the woods that's probably going to try to slip in here. Now this fawn that was by himself, now that the big stag has run off, this fawn has dared to come up and nurse on his mother right there. But he did not do it until the stag got way away. So I'm guessing he might be a little male fawn. We'll see what happens when the stag gets back up here, whether or not he has to vacate the area. So to those of you out there that are thinking about uh, declaring the name of Jesus before men and taking up your um, job as a uh, 
spreader of the gospel, I'm just telling you the devil's going to try to keep you from doing that. He's going to tell you that you have no right to speak, say these things. Well, he's wrong because I didn't say these things. I'm just the messenger. And Jesus told me, I want you to be a messenger and tell, declare my name before men and women and children. So I've turned to the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 13, and this is not me telling you this. Think about this. This is Jesus Christ himself. These are his words, and he had a reason for saying them, and he knows what he's doing because... He is the Lord God, the Savior of the world. The title of this is Repent or Perish. Let me get my glasses on here. I can see just a little bit better. There were present at that season some who told him about Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish." Are those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them? Do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. These are the words of Jesus Christ, not my words. And he told me to tell you out there about what he said. And I feel like the Holy Spirit tell me, told me, and don't be ashamed of it. You're the messenger. You're not the one that said these things. And you have every right in the world to tell people what Jesus said. And Jesus said, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Now let me tell you, boy, he's really getting, he's really getting with it right there. We are getting closer and closer to the time when the breeding season will be on us. And we are also getting closer and closer to the time when we either die in our mortal bodies and we will eventually face the judgment or Jesus comes back to earth in which he will definitely judge the living and the dead. Now he says, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. This is my opinion now about what he said. I don't think he's meaning that he, that you aren't going to perish at all. I mean, he's meaning that you may perish by having a tower fall on you or some other thing, having a disease, old age, having a car run over you or getting in a car wreck or all the various things that happen to people. But you're also going to perish in the mortal body. And if you do not repent, he's saying, then you're going to ultimately perish. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And he says, unless less you repent. Now, let me clarify that. In my opinion, this is all my opinion, what I think it means. Repenting doesn't mean that you suddenly become good. Because you can't be good. Because all men have sinned and continue to sin and come short of the glory of God. And that would be the glory of Jesus. So repent doesn't mean that you suddenly quit sinning and never sin again. It's impossible that it means that because that would be a contradiction 
of the Bible which says that none is good, no, not one. All of your works are as filthy rags. All men have come short of the glory of God. So regardless of whether we repent or not, whatever the word repent means to you, it doesn't mean make yourself good so that you don't sin anymore. It does not mean that. So what it does mean, in my opinion, is that you admit and feel sorry for what you have done be in anguish about the fact that you cannot make yourself good. So I'll say in my context, it means be sorry. Recognize the truth about yourself, that we are not good and only God is good, that we cannot save ourselves by being good. So once we do repent or realize our true situation, oh yes, now we can stop certain things, you know, that we've realized, hey, this, this drinking that I'm doing is killing me, you know. Some people manage to stop that. But it doesn't make them good because they're still sinning in various ways because there's no good in us. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. It's not good. So where does that leave us? He leaves us dependent upon Jesus. Jesus was sacrificed for us. He paid our penalty. He took it upon Himself. It was a blood sacrifice. I didn't make this up now. I'm just telling you what the Bible says nor do I fully understand it, to be honest with you. I think I understand enough that I believe it. And I believe that when Jesus said, if you believe that you will inherit eternal life. And what does he mean? He means if you believe that he is the Savior, that he is God, that he did die for you, and he definitely said that if you believe that, you would inherit eternal life. You would be a, a born again, which is a state that is separate from your mortal state. Your mortal being. Now this stag is out there at a hundred yards. Now he's managed to run all the other stags off. They don't dare come up because he'll run them through with those rapiers that he's got on his head. He's patrolling and some of his females are right there and he's got it, the group together like he wants. Now, who knows exactly what that word repent means when Jesus says, unless you repent. Knowing the whole story, I'm going to say, unless you believe. Well, let's go back to unless you repent, because it depends on whether or not you're going to be honest with yourself. Let's just say you do repent. Let's just say that you say, okay, I'm going to repent. I'm going to quit doing this or that. You know the things that you're doing wrong. And let's say that you do manage to quit. I'll just use drinking again as a problem. And I'm not saying drinking is a sin, by the way, but it is for some people because they overdo it and they, uh, it causes them to sin against other people. They spend their money on it. They damage their health and so forth and so on, make a fool of themselves. 
And yes, some people manage to quit. They do repent from that. But they don't repent from sinning. Some of them repent and then start back again. Some of them repent from drinking and don't start back again. But they have other sins that they're doing because they're not good. You can't repent from all sins. Let's put it that way. So when Jesus says, unless you repent, he's saying, I'm going to say he's saying, go ahead and try to repent. And then Jesus is further saying that if you are honest with yourself, you're going to realize, hey, I can't repent. I'm trying to repent. Yeah, I quit drinking, but I didn't quit uh, having lustful thoughts in my mind. I didn't quit telling lies or white lies. I'm not good. No matter what I do, I can repent and yet it happens again. And just like the Apostle Paul said, that he wants to do good, he wants to quit sinning, but he can't do it because his flesh, his flesh and blood man continues to sin. And if you're brutally honest with yourself, you've got to admit that you cannot quit sinning and save yourself. That's all there is to it. You just can't do it. So yes, try to repent, but be honest, and you're going to find out you can't do it. It's impossible for a flesh and blood man to clean himself up completely. So where does that leave you? It leaves you right here. Oh, Jesus, I tried to repent. Yeah, I quit drinking, but there's a lot of other stuff I haven't quit doing, especially in my thought life. I do think about stealing, schemes, getting the best of my neighbor in a business deal. Am I doing unto others as I would have them do unto me? Well, I don't guess I am. Do I love God with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind? No, I don't guess I do. No, if I'm honest with myself, no, I don't. I love myself with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind. I don't love anybody else that way, including God. Although I do love God, but I don't love Him the way that Jesus described it. The Pharisees asked Jesus, how do you read the law? And he said, do unto your neighbor as you would have himself do unto, as you would have, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. Love God right down to your toenails, I'll add. Are you doing that? No. That means you would be perfect. We're not. We're not good. So as Paul said, who will deliver me from this body of death? Paul realized that he could not be good. He could not do keep the law which Jesus summarized as love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. So where does that leave us? It leaves us being sinners to the very day or second that we die. That's why Jesus died for us. He gives us His righteousness so then we become a separate creature, a born-again creature, a born-again believer. When we ask Jesus to save us, He doesn't save our old man because our old man never will be good. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. I don't care how much you think, how good you think you are. I don't care how many times you go to church a week. I don't know how much money, I don't care how much money you give to St. Jude's. I don't care how many times you 
pray a day or look at the Bible or read the Bible through from cover to cover, you still aren't good. God only is good. So who then, Paul anguished when he said, will deliver me from this body of death? And the answer to that question is Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Savior of the world, will deliver us. And he won't deliver us by making our mortal body good. Your mortal body is not good. If it was good, it wouldn't die. I guarantee you it's going to die. I don't have to be a great prophet to figure that one out. In fact, I'm going to prophesy right now. You're going to die in the flesh, and I am too. And so are all of these animals out here and every other person. Who will deliver me? Jesus will deliver me, not by making our mortal body good, but by giving us a new man or creature. He, creature means create. So he causes us to be born as a new creature, a born again believer. And it's a spirit man, and that's why it doesn't die. It's a spirit man. We're born again. And that is the gospel. And the whole reason that I'm saying all this is hopefully to help some of the people listening to understand how do we get that born again spirit man? And it's the simplest thing in the world, the most unlikely thing in the world, not by being good or repenting, but by asking for it and realizing that we can't get it any other way. Like I said, I don't care who you are. You're not good. How do we do it? On this beautiful day. Today is the day. You just say, Jesus, will you deliver me? I cannot do it. I see that I can't. I see that you are from above and that you have offered to give me eternal life based on one thing, and that is if you believe that he was sent, that he has the power to do that. And by the way, nobody has the power to do that but God, because God can create life, and he can create that new creature in you. Okay, so you did it. We're up to 27 minutes. You did it. Now what are you going to do? Well, now you are a baby in the born-again new life, just as you were a baby in the fleshly life. And that means that you can't walk very well. Somebody else is going to have to change your diapers. Metaphorically, change your diapers. That means help you understand the gospel. Some people get it faster than others, and some people struggle with it for years after they're born again because your old fleshly man is at war with your new baby spiritual man and beats up on that. Your old fleshly man is grown. You know about that, all about that fleshly man. That fleshly man wants to dominate that spirit man. That old man is a man of evil. The old man lives in darkness still. And your new fleshly man is in the light. And as your new spirit man matures, he will get stronger and stronger. And this is the way God designed it for those that believe Jesus. There is no other way to get it. If you deny Jesus, you're not saved. That's all there is to it. If you do believe Jesus and say, Jesus, would you save me? Well, it automatically means you believe it. You believe he can do it or you wouldn't be asking him for that. 
I want to encourage you to understand this. If you ask Jesus to save you, now, I've told you that your spirit man is a baby. Your spirit man can grow faster. I can give you how to make it happen faster. Ask and you shall receive. Jesus, I'd rather grow up real quick in this new man. Would you give me that? Would you use the power of the Holy Spirit to teach me and give me a crash course. I don't want to be a baby spiritually a long time. I want to have it now. I want to have it as soon as you will give it to me. Would you please give me power from on high. I would like to skip the hard lessons, if at all possible, if that is possible, I need you to help me. There's no reason in the world that we can't ask Jesus for anything we want. And I can't think of anything better than growing fast spiritually. I'm pretty sure he'll do that. Now, I spent an awful long time as a baby Christian stumbled many times trying to learn to ride my Christian bicycle, skint my knees up, anguished over it. But I did grow a little by little. So here's what you're going to do today. You're going to say, Jesus, save me. I want to be born again. I believe that I can't do it and the flesh and blood has to diminish and the spirit has to increase. The story of John the Baptist is, is the story of that right there. John the Baptist baptized in water. That's a fleshly baptism. That's just like taking a bath. But the baptism of John didn't clean you up for good because you, the baptism of water has to be repeated over and over again. You get dirty and you have to go back and wash again. Jesus, J John the Baptist himself said that I must decrease and Jesus must increase. He said, I baptize in water, but he that comes after me baptizes in the Holy Spirit and fire. That is being born again. So John the Baptist had the privilege of representing the earthly, fleshly repentance that does not bring about eternal life. It only is a temporary washing. And what happened to John the Baptist? John the Baptist said it himself, I must decrease. And he suddenly decreased by about 12 inches when they cut his head off. That represented the ending of the idea that keeping the law could save you. So John the Baptist is out of here, and that's what Jesus meant. He must decrease, or that's what John the Baptist himself said. He said, I am not worthy to untie or tie his sandals. I am from the earth. He is from heaven. John the Baptist told the whole story of how it works, if you understand it. Was John the Baptist saved? I guess he was because he said when he saw Jesus here is the Lamb of God. He knew who Jesus was. And if you know who Jesus is, then I guess you're saved. Because if you really know who he is, you're going to say, Jesus, save me. And, it's, and it will be done. All right, that's the way it came out today. Uh, it comes out different every day. And I like to think. And I feel pretty confident that the Holy Spirit tells me these things and helps me explain these things that can't be explained 
except with the help of the Holy Spirit. See what's going on out in that direction right there. All right, we'd like to end this by saying the Lord's Prayer. And uh, thank you for watching and and uh, we're going to end it by saying the Lord's Prayer and we would like you to say it with us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be, be done on earth as it, as it is, is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If any of y'all are wondering what that pile of rocks is out there, that's a big pile of cement, broken up cement that I tore down a building and had somewhere to put it so I put it out here in the pasture that's Mount Sinai right there <laughs>